Do you find yourself doing this, thinking about something over and over and over and over again? Hi, my name's Christine L. Conroy. Welcome to Happy Stuff and Fluff, a channel for women who are getting happy, living longer and growing younger. And yes, today we're talking about ruminating. Ruminating. And if, if you answered yes to that question, don't worry about it. You are not alone. However, we need to do something about it. It is a mind trap that you need to uh, get out of, basically. Ruminating is one of the cognitive distortions that we talked about last week. If you haven't seen that yet, I'll leave a link to it here. So ruminating is those irrational, uh, sorry, not ruminating, cognitive distortions are the irrational thoughts that we reinforce over time until they become beliefs and go on to negatively colour our judgment about ourselves, about others, and about the world around us. And ruminating is one of those. So it's dwelling on your problems. The simple, a simple definition of it is dwelling on your problems, um, which leads to repetitive negative thinking. And as I say, it's something that we all do at one time or another, but we do need to stop. It is a mind trap that we need to get out of because if it becomes habitual, its impact can be absolutely devastating. It's even gaining a reputation as being the silent mental disorder. And this is why we need to catch it before it becomes habitual. We need to control it before it gets out of hand. Now, before we go further, I need to tell you that I... I have a distinction between rumination and worry. So the difference between those two, um, rumination tends to be about the past. So something that has happened, a past event, whereas worrying tends to be about something that hasn't happened yet, something in the future. And don't worry, we will be talking about worry in the future. <laughs> uh, pun intended. Okay, so back to rumination then. Let's have some examples, some kind of practical examples that I come across that cause people to ruminate. So a relationship breakup, for example, uh, with a partner or with a friend where you constantly play over that breakup. Um, why did she or he behave in that way? Why did you do that? those kind of uh, questions you ask yourself and play them over and over again in your mind. Uh, sometimes perhaps a traumatic event that's happened at some point that's been upsetting to you and you constantly replay the, Im the imagery of that traumatic event. Um, one that I come across a lot, someone who is overly critical, shall we say, or less than constructively critical about your work or about you at work and you, um, you ruminate over that, for example, for the weekend. Who do they think they are? Um, what, what, why do they think they can speak to you like that? Um, and then the other one is when someone's, for example, if you've had an argument with someone or heated words or there's been a situation and you think to yourself, oh, I should have said this and I should have said that, but you didn't at the time. It's only when you come away from the situation that then you start to think of the things that you should have said um, and you continue to uh, pour over that particular argument. Now, the common denominator to all these things is that they all lead to negative thoughts and feelings generally about yourself. And we know that negative feelings make us, uh, negative thinking makes us feel bad. I've talked about this before. And, and in one sense, this is a good thing because it alerts us to the fact that um, we've just been thinking about something we shouldn't have been thinking about or uh, uh, or experiencing cognitive distortion of some kind. So for example, um, I tend to feel my emotions in my tummy. So I always, and it, and, and it becomes second nature to me now to whenever I'm at a red light, I check in with how am I feeling? 
how am I feeling? If I have that tight feeling in my tummy, then I ask myself, what was I thinking about just then? Because you know you think on autopilot. You're going along thinking, 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 and you don't even know you're doing it. So to check in, the amazing thing about this is, and this is the first thing you can do to um, help yourself, is what I call be aware and label. So let's say I'm at the traffic lights, I get my tummy, I think, what was I thinking about then? And I think, oh, I was ruminating about a particular thing. That was me, Christine, you were ruminating again. Move on. It's amazing how, and some of you could stop the video right now and, and that would help you to control your ruminating. The minute you are become aware that you're doing it and actually label it, oh, that's you having a ruminating thought, move on. It works, it really works. Now, there are other things you can do if it doesn't. So, for example, back to the traffic light situation. Um, obviously, you could be at home or wherever you are, but I'm at the traffic lights. I've just been ruminating. Then I come into the present moment. So mindfulness will help you. Number two, mindfulness, being present and using all five senses. So when I realise I'm ruminating, then I will come into my, where am I? What can I see? What can I hear? What can I smell? What can I feel? Do I have any particular taste? Um, bring in all five, sentence, all five senses and think about those things to bring you right into the present moment, which takes your focus away from your ruminating thoughts and into the present moment. Now that moves me on to meditation, which of course, um, you couldn't really do, I guess you could do a minute meditation at the traffic lights, but if you're at home, then get into a habit of meditation. Um, because I think I actually did a meditation that, that talked about thinking of your, uh, of the thoughts as on a cloud and letting them float by you. Because this is what meditation is. It helps you to train your mind. It's not about clearing your mind altogether of thoughts. Your thoughts are going to come in. Meditation and a meditation practice helps you see the thought come in, but just see it as a thought. Oh, it's a thought and do not judge it. Just let it go and then come back to your breathing. And then another thought comes in. And so you th another th here comes another thought. There goes another thought. Back to breathing. Now, it sounds ridiculous when you say the words, but when you're actually meditating, this is what you do, and with practice, it becomes second nature to you, so much so that you take it off the mat and into real life, as I say, that so that when you get this one of these ruminating thoughts, then you can think, oh, it's me ruminating, there's the thought, let it go. So meditation is uh, the third one. Um, and then question. So question, change your questioning of the thought that you were thinking. So let's go back to our example, which was uh, the relationship. Why did um, he behave that way? Why did I do that? Now remember, you can only control your thoughts and what you do. So if you bring that questioning back to um, what could I have done differently? Change your thoughts from who and why to uh, what and how. So from who and why, so no blame, to what and how. What could I have done differently? How can I do something different next time? That stops this loop because the loop it focuses on, when you're ruminating, the, the loop focuses on the problem and the consequences. The problem and how you feel about it. Um, it doesn't it doesn't focus on the solution. So if you change from what to how, then you're becoming more solution focused, which cuts the loop and leads to action and then closure. And that's what your brain loves. Your brain loves you to take and make a decision. So if you think, how could I behave differently next time and answer that question, that's your decision made. You can forget the rumination because you've solved, you've gone through the process and found a solution. It's so simple and so effective. Whatever the situation is, think about what and how. Ask yourself, 
Is there a silver lining? What did I learn? What can I learn? If there is not a silver lining, stitch your own silver lining. All of those things will give you um, a more solution focused thought and action and behaviour if you take that forward and your brain will be happy about that and you will be relaxed and stop ruminating. Okay, uh, another study found that walking in nature, people who walk in nature reported less rumination than those who didn't. So, um, you know, I've talked about spending more time in nature. We've talked about biophilic design. Uh, we've talked about all of those things on this channel. So those are things that you can do. So become aware and label it. Mindfulness, meditation, question and go for a walk in nature. Okay, I have a couple of books I'm going to recommend to you also. I'm going to leave the links to them down below in the uh, description section that will really help you if you think um, that you need more than I've given you today. Just tell me what it is that you ruminate, if you can, in the comments box down below. What is it that you find yourself ruminating about? And when you write that down, see if anything that I've said today, see if you can apply anything of those of the, those things which I have talked about to your particular situation and see what you can do about that. And let's get you off the downward spiral of ruminating. But also remember, you've spent a lifetime doing this and this takes practice. Each time you find yourself ruminate, ruminating over a particular thing, you need to apply these uh, these strategies to that particular incident. Okay, hope that's helped and I'll see you next time and until then remember that on the happy stuff of love we're getting happy, living longer and growing younger and I'll see you next time.